Hi, I'm Alistair, and I tell stories. The story you're about to witness is a unique perspective of Baldur's Gate 3, and it's the story of two violent characters. You've been warned. They wake up amidst scorching flames. All around them, alien technology they don't recognize. Something has been done to them, although their scattered memories cannot piece it together. The ground is soft, built like flesh, and it's shaking violently. As Blabababada, the novice warlock, tries to remember her past, a rush of violent impulses fills her mind. But first, wherever they are, they need to get out of there. They are in danger, and of this, both Blababada and Moonlight the Barbarian are certain. This is how the story begins, on a Mind Flayer flying ship crushing fast into the skies of Avernus, the Infernal Layer. Blababada and Moonlight don't know each other. Blababada in particular doesn't know anyone, not even herself. They, however, decide to collaborate in order to survive whatever is happening on the ship. As they look around, they find a little pond contained by what seems like wall of flesh. Inside, Mind Flayer tadpoles. Lababada's violent urges and confusion bring her to destroy the pond in an act of foolish vengeance towards the creatures that cause whatever is happening to them both. The pond surprisingly explodes, sending Blababada flying a few meters in the air, but the little creatures are dead, totally worth it. While exploring their surroundings, they find a human with his skull open, his brain exposed and squirming. The thing, somehow, speaks directly into their minds. It seeks help, it is young, malformed, and it needs our hero's help to escape the body of the dying man. It explains, the ship is in danger, there are enemies within. Lababara gently prizes the brain from the skull, then, realizing an opportunity is in front of her, she decides to cripple the creature, make it subservient somehow. While controlling her urges to destroy the brain and murder the creature, she proceeds to damage it just enough for the brain to behave like she wants to. The creature then sprouts legs and tentacles, and thanks our heroes for their help, completely unaware of the little operation that Blababada made on it. It decides to follow our heroes as if they are the wedded masters, mind flayers, it then explains, speaking again directly into their minds, we need to reach the helm of the ship, we are in danger. And so our heroes go in the only direction they can go to, to the helm. As they get out of the room, they can finally see outside, but it's a grim vision. All around them, mont mountains tall as the sky of the color of sulfuric acid, the sounds of battle are everywhere, and an incredible sight flies just past them. A huge red dragon soaring in the sky, dodging giant bullets of psychic energy. A vision that one would normally see only in legends. Suddenly, a woman appears jumping out of the thin air. Immediately, she draws a sword and threatens her heroes. Abomination, this is your hand. But she suddenly stopped. A wave of psychic energy emanates from both our heroes and the warrior. Suddenly, our heroes can see through the eyes of the woman. They see a red dragon, a silver sword, and a flesh of their own faces. Somehow, all three of their minds seem connected. The confusing experience is enough to convince the warrior to bring a weapon down. You are no thrall. Lucky it bless me today. Together we might survive, she says. Lababada then asks for an explanation of what is going on to them. The woman unveil that the three of them have been infected with a tadpole, a parasite, and that they will soon transform into mind flayers, 
their bodies and minds tainted and twisted. Within days, the will became cake. Mindfully is in the woman's language. But what they need to know to do now, but what they need to do now is survive. And in order to do that, Lazelle, the green woman, suggests that they get to the helm and take control of the ship. But first, they'll have to deal with the little devils that are bunketing on some troll corpses, right in their way. And so, the fight begins. Blavobarda goes first. A surge of power and joy envelops her as she delivers a crushing blow with her Eldritch Blast. Finally, she can kill something. Moonlight let herself go to her barbaric rage as meshes through the creatures. Maybe less elegant than Blavobarda's display of magic power, but surely as effective. The fight reaches its end with our heroes victorious and completely uninjured. They keep pressing on for the helm. They find a woman trapped in a pod, just as they were a few minutes ago. She screams for help, but they decide to ignore her. There's no time. Plus, none of them have the heart of gold that usually heroes have in stories and legends. All three of them, Lazelle included, are cold-blooded killers trying to survive. They finally reach the elm, where mind flayers and devils are fighting each other. One of the mind flayers dies right in front of their eyes. It seems clear who is winning the battle, and our heroes are immediately attacked by devils. The one mind flayer is still standing, Expecting them to be trolls, incite them to ignore the fight and activate the control of the ship so they can jump somewhere far away, on another realm. But our heroes, driven by bloodthirst, decide to kill the devils. The fight begins.
You have no use now. Sends the Mind Flayer in the brains and attack them. But it's too weak and it becomes the next prey of our heroes. Finally, they reach the controls and activate the ship's realm jump. And that's where we're going to stop for now. Yeah, I'm sorry um, that the video is a little bit short and probably you expected it to go a little bit further, but this is a somewhat of a proof of concept for me to understand whether something like this would be appreciated and if it turns out alright or not. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think and that would be very appreciated. It would also help me understand how things are and if there's a point in doing this because it, it took me a long time to write just this part because, well, I have a few problems of my own and I am not a very good writer. So let me know. I would really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you the next time. Bye.